So in the last video, we went through how I was constructing the panels for my Nano Leaf replica light. Um, in that video, we showed the uh, circuit that I was using, which is kind of a bit of a bodge at the moment. Um, so what I wanted to do was have a look at making my own PCB, um, one that can actually fit into the blanking panel that I'm already using. So um, this is what I'm looking at at the moment. I've got a the ESP. Now this is a smaller one compared to the one that I was using currently so this one hopefully will make it a little bit easier to actually fit in the system uh, this particular one actually came with actually a nice selection of headers so you've got obviously pin socket and then sockets with the long pins on there as well the only ones we're going to be using are actually the pin headers so get them out of the way uh, i've got a small led strip just because i'm going to use that as my test piece uh, and then here is some uh, quad buffers um, these are the 74HCT125s uh, and obviously I've got a breadboard with a switch um, but I want to try to see how the switch works on the WLED software which apparently you can turn it on and off and then you've got like long press, short press, all that sort of stuff looking off for different functions so um, I want to have a look and see what that can do. Um, so to begin with the first thing we're going to need to do is get the headers uh, attached to the ESP, so we'll start with that to begin with. So the easiest way I've found to do this is pop your headers in to your breadboard and I can just lay there we go, you can just, the ESP can lay on top. Now the nice thing here is obviously I know that everything's actually in line so hopefully when it goes into a PCB, everything should actually line up. So next up, let's just solder that down. Right, so with that soldered in position, uh, next up, let's just pop. We only need one of the uh, buffers. This just came in a pack or two that I ordered off eBay. So we'll take one of them out. Now, like a lot of these, the legs are splayed out a little bit. So to make them fit in here a little bit easier, I'm just going to bend them over slightly. And then we'll just pop that in there. That's that done. And then I've got a selection here of cables we can use to connect everything together. So what we're looking at is the fact that I can't remember the circuit diagram. Give me a moment, I'm just going to go and have a quick look and see what the actual circuit is for this. Right, so we've got the pinout here of the uh, 74HCT125. Um, so you can see the way that this is organized. So we're only going to be using uh, this one over here. Let me just make sure I've got my pen on. So this is the set we're going to be using. Um, so we've got the chip enable, or output enable really, uh, the input and then the output. The other three are not being used. So one thing to bear in mind with these is that we need to make sure that any other inputs are actually held in a known state. You don't want to leave them floating. So all I'm going to do here is these will be connected to a positive rail, so five volt. Uh, and then the inputs here, I'm just going to tie them low, probably tie them high as well. Um, obviously VCC is going to go off and it's going to go to our plus five volt and then ground will go to ground. There's a surprise. Um, with the output enabled for the first uh, buffer that one I am going to just tie that to whoops so yeah the uh, uh, output enable for the first buffer will tie that to zero the input will go off to the ESP and the output will go to the LEDs so that's what we're looking at there so we need to wire this chip in the same way as that. Right, 
Right, so that's our buffer chip organized. Um, thankfully I noticed that I did actually put the ground into the positive, which would have been a very, very bad idea. Um, so next up, we need to get the pin out for the WLED off of the ESP itself. So let us just switch over. There we go. So we're looking at the main one we're interested in at the moment is D4, which is uh, the output for the LEDs. So I need to connect D4, which looking at this is right next door to the ground pin. And then that's going to go into pin two. So over there. And then pin two will be our output for the LEDs. Uh, so let me just find the cable I was going to use. Right, couldn't find the cable I wanted to use. So what I've pulled out is this. This is just single core uh, wire, which we can use just so that way I can just plug it straight into the board itself. So I just need to get some of these, get three small lengths. Hopefully you remember from the last video, if you watched that one, um, Obviously, you've got your data throughput on these. These particular LEDs are badly labeled. They've got data in and data in both sides. Thankfully, they do have the arrow, which does, is correct on this one. So the data input is actually this side here. So let me just quickly pre-tin those. And then lastly, we'll just pop on our single core cable. So at this point we can then connect this up. So this is going to go, the blue data pin is going to go into pin three. Ooh, let's feed that down. And then we've got, oops. I really put that around the wrong way, but there we go. Uh, ground and five volts. And there we go. So this is dragging the five volts uh, off of the input, which Ordinarily, I wouldn't suggest doing for this. I'd say run the power for the LED separately, but we're only testing at the moment. So I'm going to leave the button to one side for a minute um, and I'm just going to get a USB cable and we'll plug in and we'll make sure that this is working. I have already pre-flashed the WLED firmware onto here, so it should hopefully just kick in uh, and start showing these LEDs. Right, so I've got the USB. This is just plugged into a power bank at the moment. So if we turn all that on, hopefully, here we go, the LEDs come on beautifully. Excellent. So we know that this circuit is working at the moment. Um, it's all set to the default, so uh, it's just coming up with the orangey colour by the looks of it. Um, so yeah, that's brilliant. So we know that this is actually working. Next thing I want to test out is the button, um, see whether we can actually have on-off capability through the hardware rather than just doing it through the web interface so let's just unplug this and we'll wire that up quickly um, now if i understand it correctly all we need for this is a uh, one side going into d3 and any other side to ground i believe there is the uh, pull up is enabled in it um, obviously bearing in mind that the pins for these go across that way so uh, where they come out from the side of the little tack switch um, they are connected opposite each other hence the reason why it's straddling the gap in the middle so hopefully all i should need to do now is plug the other side into ground and if we reconnect this back up again and turn my power bank on there we go now hopefully default behavior i think is to do nothing right okay let's go and have a look at the manual and see what that actually says right so i'm an idiot <laughs> again uh, i'm always an idiot so uh i completely forgot that obviously the bus bars at the end here are split in the middle so you know i was kind of putting over here and wondering why the button wasn't doing anything because it wasn't actually attaching to ground so when you press it now it will switch on and off which is Fantastic. So, largely all I wanted to do in this video is just make sure that the circuit itself was going to work. 
um, and also just to make sure that we are getting everything that we're supposed to be getting. So if we just try and get everything in here. Oh, that's going to reflect two seconds. Let's get that over here. Get that out of the light. Here we are. So obviously the ink display, so it's all black and white, but um, it does still work with changing the colors, even though you can't actually see them. So we can switch between all the colors so we can see that everything is actually working. Now we can do random. So brilliant. So that is all working. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we'll look at designing an actual circuit board for this that will actually fit into the LED display. Um, and then hopefully so that we can have a button. The other thing I want to check, um, I've only just found out about it, but this has the ability to switch a relay on and off. Now the idea behind that, as I understand it, is so that you can uh, basically turn the LEDs off in their entirety because even when they're off, they are still draining power. So that's something to, the, by doing that, you can actually drain, uh, switch them off entirely. So obviously you're saving a bit more power. I don't actually want to use it for that. What my thought with it is um, to connect that output up to just a standard LED and use that as an indicator uh, on the board, a bit like the blue one here. So when you turn it off, the blue LED uh, also switches off once the LEDs are in their off position. So you know that, and it obviously comes back on. So to have a similar functionality on the case so that um, you can see whether it thinks that they're on. So if you've turned this down so the brightness is right down to zero, the LEDs are off, but it's still actually pumping out data to those LEDs. Right, there's a lesson there. Make sure you've got enough room on your SD card to actually record everything you're saying in one go without it dying on you and then having to free up space. Um, so yeah, as I was literally just saying, uh, the issue is, is that you could have it so it's set to be effectively off without realizing it. You can press the button and then obviously now we know it's switched off, but if you don't have that LED visible, as you press the button, nothing actually happens. So you don't know if it's actually working or not. So this would actually tell you at least it's trying to turn the LEDs on. Um, so yeah, you can obviously get that to come straight back up again. So yeah, that's it. So like I say, in the next video, we'll look at designing a PCB so this can be mounted into the existing frame.